Now, uh, <laughs> nearly every congestive heart failure you treat will be on an ACE inhibitor, an angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor. All right. And here's uh, the mechanism where our, uh, we get decreased perfusion from the failing heart. Um, we're going to get increased sympathetic nervous system uh, activation. Uh, that stimulates release of renin. Renin converts angiotensinogen into angiotensin 1, and then our angiotensin converting enzyme converts angiotensin 1 to the active angiotensin 2. And it has this whole variety of effects. It's going to de increase ADH, so we're going to retain water. We're going to increase aldosterone, which is going to retain sodium and re therefore retain water. It's going to vasoconstrict to increase afterload and some effects on the venous side. And just like the aldosterone is retaining sodium, also the angiotensin retains sodium. So again, this is part of the compensatory mechanism, but it became so overstimulated that it becomes detrimental. And we come in here and we block it at this enzyme, the angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor. All right, one of the common drug interactions you will read about is that the NSAIDs, the cyclooxygenase inhibitors, may interfere with the benefit of ACE inhibitors. All right, and NSAIDs uh, are thought, um, well, they're not thought, they do cause uh, vasodilatory prostaglandins, uh, which uh, help maintain GFR and some of them actually cause promotion of sodium um, <clears throat> excretion by the kidney. And if you block that with an NSAID, then you block those good prostaglandins uh, from doing their job and you antagonize the effects of the ACE inhibitor. It's not a direct antagonism of the drug itself, it's an antagonism of these mechanisms. <laughs> the problem is we do, you know, Heart failure and DJD are both problems of older dogs. So some dogs you're going to have to have on both. And you just uh, do the best you can, use the lowest dose of the NSAID that controls it. But you may have to add additional medication for the heart failure because of the NSAID effect. OK. What about these? All right. Uh, there's their mechanism. They work on both arterial or afterload and venous preload. They decrease aldosterone. The main one we use is enalapril, and it is an approved drug in the dog. It's approved for once a day. We tend to more commonly to use it DID, though. It's given orally. Now, if you have a uh, dog that cannot take oral meds for whatever reason while he's in ICU, there is an injectable. It actually turns out enalapril is a prodrug that's converted to active enalaprilate. And if you want to go injection, you can get the human enalaprilate to use. Okay. Uh, now, whenever you put them on an ACE inhibitor, you're going to come back uh, in about a week. Other people vary in the time and check their BUN and creatinine all right, and blood pressure. Now, we check the BUN and creatinine not because it's nephrotoxic. It's not. Actually, it is very beneficial in protein-losing nephropathies. What we're checking for is a pre-renal azotemia. Every once in a while, some dogs, they respond so well to an ACE inhibitor, they get hypotensive. And therefore, they get a pre-renal azotemia. So you're checking the BUN or creatinine for pre-renal azotemia to, as an indirect measurement of blood pressure to say you're using too high a dose and you need to back off. Ideally, you measure the blood pressure directly. Okay. <coughs> if they're in renal failure, we use benazapril. Uh, enalapril is eliminated both by the liver and the kidney. Benazapril is only eliminated by the liver. All right. So definitely renal failures will use the benazapril. It's human only. It's not approved for dogs, but we use it. Some people will choose it over enalapril anyway. Uh, the reason is that, <clears throat> remember, 
uh, as your heart fails, your GFR is going to decrease. So you, you get a waxing and waning, you know, it's failing, the GFR is bad, so you add something to improve the heart failure and the GFR goes up. And so you've got this variable renal function uh, as the uh, heart failure uh, progresses. So some people will just go right off to the benazapril rather than the enalapril, but mostly we use enalapril, okay. Now back to the issue of the kidney. Uh, probably every protein losing nephropathy will go on an ACE inhibitor. This is not related to heart failure. This is just if they have kidney disease that's protein losing nephropathy. And the reason is the efferent arteries, the outflowing artery from the glomerulus preferentially vasodilates with an ACE inhibitor. So <clears throat> you've got your inflow and your outflow. If you make your outflow tube bigger than your inflow tube, the pressure drops. All right, so you have less hydrostatic driving pressure pushing urine and protein in across the glomerulus into the tubule. All right, and uh, we don't want to have protein in the urine, A, because it we don't want to lose the protein, we don't want to get hyperproteinemic, but it turns out that high levels of protein actually damage the tubule. All right, high levels of protein in urine are nephrotoxic, so they make it worse. <coughs> so uh, you'll use ACE inhibitors uh, just routinely now in protein-losing nephropathies. Now, um, ACE inhibitors are approved in humans, but they have largely been replaced by angiotensin II receptor antagonists. They kind of do the same thing, but a little bit more directly. They work on the receptor rather than the enzyme. Why? It's because it turns out that ACE is identical to the kinase, some of the kinase systems that degrade bradykinin. <clears throat> so we tend to get an increase in bradykinin when they're on an ACE inhibitor. Well, that doesn't seem to cause too much problems that we know of in our animals, but bradykinin can induce coughs in humans. So humans tend to get a chronic cough when they're on an ACE inhibitor. So that's why in human medicine now, they'll use an angiotensin II receptor antagonist <clears throat> rather than an ACE inhibitor, typically. We still use the ACE inhibitors. I'll read on Ben every once in a while someone is using one of these antagonists in the dog, but it's not mainstream at this point.